Hello, this is Gary Moore speaking. Hello, Junior, this is Jimmy. Jimmy Durante, where are you? I'm here in New York at the Hotel Astor, and boy, is it crowded. I have to share my mailbox with somebody else. Well, what's wrong with that? It gets pretty stuffy sleeping two in a mailbox. <laughs> Here's the Comedy Caravan, a rebroadcast for you men and women in the armed forces of you. Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore, with songs by Roy Bargy and his orchestra. My friends, we bring you a man who has just returned from Chicago, where he was presented as a star of stage and screen. That is, when he went out on the stage, he had to be protected by a screen. And here he is, Gary Moore. Well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Howard, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to be with you, and especially nice to be back here in Hollywood, where the men are men, and the women are... and the women are. It's nice, and I know that Jimmy Durant is just as happy to be in New York this week where he's the only man who can stand on Broadway and sniff the flowers in Central Park. <laughs> yes, in New York and Hollywood, two great towns. Gary, you mean you didn't enjoy our trip last week to Chicago? Oh, Chicago's wonderful, Howard, but it's so cold there. You, you know in Lincoln Park, that statue of General Grant? Yeah. It was so cold when I arrived in Chicago that General Grant got off his horse and checked in at the Hotel Sherman. <laughs> it, was, it was freezing. But you, you take Hollywood now, Howard. It never snows here. There's just a brief rainy season that starts about this time of year. Starts about this time, huh? Well, mm -hmm. oh, in fact, look, Howard. Here comes the rainy season now. Well, now we're ready for spring. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Gary. You mean that's all there is to it? That's all there is to it. Uh-oh. What was that? I don't know. I, I guess someone must have stepped on a terribly juicy orange. <laughs> Let, let me tell you just one thing, Howard. I... Oh, excuse me, friends. Come in. Oh, there you are, Mr. Moore, you delirious man. <laughs> Pardon me, were you laughing or is someone siphoning my gas? Why, Mr. Moore, it's me, Mrs. Wordle Birtle. Why, so it is. Pull up a Wordle and rest your Birtle. <laughs> Tell me, how did, uh, how did you and your husband Wilberbud get along while I was away? Oh, Mr. Moore, I hate to say this, but Wilberbud and I have had a spat. No. Oh, I asked him how our marriage was going, and he said, true to form. True to form? Yes, he said it's hard to be true to a form like yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too bad. But, but you know what they say, men are all alike. I know, is it wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> Quit licking my hand. Oh, but never mind, my husband. <laughs> tell me, tell me about Mr. Durante. When you came back to Hollywood, how did he come to go to New York? Oh, you know that Durante. He came to the station to go to Hollywood, but he misunderstood the train caller and went to New York. Oh, now come, no train caller is that bad. Oh, you think not, huh? I had an uncle once who was a train caller. We couldn't understand a word he said. He'd stand around the station all day yelling, 
Trains leaving on track 12 for plasma, 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 nipple, for sparkly bit, for this, this, for this, 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 all the boys. Why? Whatever happened to him? Well, he finally died and left us. We couldn't catch the name of where he went. <laughs> but we do know that Jimmy's in New York. In fact, if you'll listen closely, you'll hear the orchestra 3,000 miles away bringing him on, the one and only Jimmy Durante in person. <laughs> Now even when things go wrong Why, you be better, you even look better ah. What a note, what a note That note comes from Il Travador In fact, that's the note that made Travador ill <laughs> Oh, Jimmy Jimmy, do you realize what has just happened? You sang a note in New York, it traveled across the East, came over the Mississippi, through the Midwest, over the Rockies, and reached me here in Hollywood. Jimmy, your voice traveled 3,000 miles in less than one second. How do you like that? And I wasn't even trying. <laughs> <laughs> but, Junior, I'm not I'm singing my best tonight. You see, I'm still troubled with that frog in my throat. Jimmy, I've told you before, don't worry about it. Bing Crosby has a frog in his throat. Even Rudy Valley's got a frog in his throat. I know, but mine is sitting on a toadstool. <laughs> ah, Junior. Junior, it's good to be back in the metropolitan area. That's any part of the East Coast that the mayor can reach by fire truck. <laughs> and Gary, the first thing I did when I got into town was to take my girlfriend out to see the World's Fair. And did we have fun? Oh, hold on. Sh Schnaz, the World's Fair closed four years ago. What kind of fun can you have in an empty lot? My boy has an empty head. <laughs> but Gary, yeah. tell me, what's new in Hollywood? Well, for one thing, Jimmy, you forgot to notify the milkman to stop his deliveries. There are now 38 quarts of milk on your doorstep. Don't worry about it, Junior. With Frank Morgan living on one side of me and W.C. Fields living on the other side, my milk is perfectly safe. <laughs> Can it be you? 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 I don't know. You got me confused. <laughs> Junior, you yeah? have to excuse me. There's a character here who wishes to start a conversary with me. I am Mr. Knickerbocker, the chairman of the Broadway Association, and I came down to see if you're enjoying your stay. Enjoying my stay? Get me my lawyers. Get me the president. Imagine a noise of you guys fixing up Durante with a pile of bedroom and bath. How humiliating. But, Mr. Durante, what's wrong with a parlor bedroom and bath? They're in three different hotels. <laughs> My bellhop is really hopping. Well, well, no matter, Mr. Durante. Tell me what brings you to our fair city. Nostalgia, Mr. Knickerbocker. I've been in Hollywood ten months and I got homesick. So I left California to stick my nose in New York. You could have done that without leaving California. <laughs> <laughs> no, California. <laughs> Do you get it? I get it, and you can have it back very cheap. <laughs> Boy, what a wonderful thrill it is to be back in New York. Why, the minute I stepped off the train, I was walking on air. You were walking on air? Yes, the porter forgot to put the stool down. <laughs> anyway... I soon find myself out on Broadway, the street of memories. I see the old Palace Theater, Pinty Moore's, the Astor Hotel, and a big tear starts to roll down my nose. Really? Yes. And it's a brave tear that will start on a trip like that. <laughs> well, Mr. Durante, I know just how you feel about New York. But tell me, did you visit any of the old familiar places? Undoubtedly. And burlesque is still burlesque. You know, they had a balloon dancer there, and you should have seen it. First she'd dance, then she'd blow, then she'd dance, then she'd blow. Dance and blow and dance and blow. I don't understand. Why was she always blowing? A balloon had a slow leak. <laughs> same old New York, same old New York. Yes, same old New York, same old New York. Mr. Knickerbocker, you have added nothing to the conversation. <laughs> After the show, I takes a walk up the gay white way, and before I know it, I'm at 59th Street. So I strolled at the Central Park. Ah, those New York pigeons. So I strolled right out again. 
Same old New York. Same old New York. Mr. Durante. Mr. Durante, I read all about the French ice skating party you attended in Radio City. Yes, and what a party. Before the carnival started, I ordered... I ordered a Rockefeller sent a cocktail. A Rockefeller sent a cocktail? What's that? One drink, and it'll Rockefeller sent a... <laughs> I got a million of them, a million of them. <laughs> Say, Gary, did you hear that one? Are you oh, listening? Yes, I'm listening. I... But, Jimmy, tell me more about that French ice skating party. Did you have any fun? Indubitably. After skating hither, thither, and on my widow's too, yeah. <laughs> I spot the French girl in distress. I offered to help her fasten her skate, and she says, Wee oui, wee. Oui. That's French, Junior, for bend down and start lacing. <laughs> As I'm tying the bow on her first skate, she says, uh, Merci beaucoup, ooh la 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 la. Vive la France, ooh la 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 la. Silver play, ooh la 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 la. Why was she always saying ooh la 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 la? She was sitting on the other skate. <laughs> From Hollywood, Roy Bargy and the orchestra in a Roy Bargy arrangement of How Many Hearts Have You Broken? in his orchestra playing How Many Hearts Have You Broken with those great, big, beautiful eyes? Or as they sing in my family, How Many Flowers Have You Wilted with that great, big, beautiful schnoz? <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, Junior, what kind of lecture have you prepared for us out there in Hollywood tonight? Well, James, in the past, I've given many educational lectures, such as the one for elderly ladies entitled, Grandma, Please Stay Home in Wisconsin. I Can't Get You a Date with Van Johnson. <laughs> But, uh, but tonight, James, I'm giving a really worthwhile talk entitled, How to Be a Comedian, or Run Into the Roundhouse, Nelly, the Brakeman Can't Corner You There. Junior, that shell throw away my shampoo, cautious. Thank you, James. Well, my friends, here's the way it goes. You see, as you go through life in this business, you're always meeting a few unfortunate people who would like to be a comedian. Oh, now, boy, you're talking about me. I've always wanted to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> My dear little pancake, and when I say pancake, I mean you look so waffle. <laughs> I'd be delighted to explain to you. Now, I hate to admit this, you see, but it's an open secret in radio that it's not the comedian who makes you laugh, it's his stooges. It is? Certainly. Now, you take Rochester, for instance. Where would he be today if he didn't have Jack Benny, the stooge, for him? <laughs> 
point. For instance, where would Dorothy Lamour be without her sarong? I don't know, but wherever it is, I'd like to be there. <laughs> But, but getting back to comedians, every comedian has a different type of stooge. Now, you take, for instance, the telephone stooge. Every time the comedian is stuck for a joke, the telephone... <laughs> you know, there goes my telephone now. Uh, hello? Uh, hello, Mr. Moore. I sing, dance, and play the accordion. And I'd love to appear in your amateur hour. My amateur hour? My dear man, everyone who appears on this program is a professional. They are? Well, brother, you could have fooled me. <laughs> Oh, you got to have those fellows call up to get along. <laughs> oh, yes, and do you have a special phone for the purpose? Oh, no, no, I use the same phones the public uses. Just the other night, I went into a telephone booth to talk to my girlfriend. Did you have a nice chat? Oh, yes. But the people outside got tired of waiting, so we had to come out. <laughs> but then... <laughs> but then all stooges, you see, don't use the telephone. Some of them prefer to knock on doors. Why, I remember that the... Oh, excuse me, friends. <laughs> come in. Mr. Moore. Yes? Could you please give me $25 for a suit of pajamas? $25 for a suit of pajamas? Why, $10 is top. I know, but I want the bottom, too. Who wants the bottom? Well, he's just a guy who can use them. Now, um... Well, uh, tell me, Mr. Moore. Yes, yes. Uh, do people like him always knock on doors? Well, in the summertime, yes, but in the winter, they ring the doorbell. Well, why don't they knock in the winter? Shaft knuckles, oh. you see. <laughs> but then, but it doesn't make any difference. A doorbell works just as well. What? You see what I mean? Uh, come in. Oh, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it, I tell you, but I couldn't help myself. I said to myself, no, no, you fool, put down that gun. Don't shoot, don't, don't shoot, don't shoot. What's the matter with you? Nothing, but ain't I talented? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Too bad his parents weren't the type to devour their young. Mr. Moore, this is very interesting. Uh, what is the fun to pay these stooges? Salary and car fare? Well, in the East they pay them car fare, but out here in the West, the stooges have their own special conveyance. How do they travel? By stooge coach. <laughs> oh, wait to bring me another order of eggs. I'm cracking them tonight. <laughs> but then again, Mrs. Wertel Bertel, here's what we call the straight man stooge. Now, he never tells a joke. He just comes in and asks the question, you see, so I can tell the joke. Now, this fella is... is... Mr. Moore. Yes? I'd like to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Who was that lady I saw you with last night? Who was that lady you saw me with last night? Yes, who was that lady I saw you with last night? That was no lady. That was my next-door neighbor's wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. No stooge is supposed to walk in here and sock me in the jaw. I ain't no stooge, bud. You're not. Who are you? I'm your next door neighbor. <laughs> Gary, this is Georgia having a wonderful time in New York. We miss you, and you really sounded swell from here in the big city. Oh, hi, Georgia. We miss you too here in Hollywood. But a song from you will make everything okay. What's on the menu from her nibs, Miss Gibbs? Well, the one you asked for, Gary, my chum. So lean back and give me a thought while I sing. It had to be you. It had to be you. I wanted a rock, finally for somebody who could make me be blue. And even be glad Just to be sad Thinking of you Some others I've seen Might never be me Might never be cross Try to be bought But they wouldn't do For nobody else Gave me a thrill with all your folks, I love you still. It had to be you. Wonderful you, it had to be you. It had to be you. It had to be you. I looked all around. I finally found somebody who could make me be blue. Could make me be true And even 
even be glad just to be sad thinking of you. Some others I've seen might never be me, might never be cross, try to be fun, they wouldn't do. Cause nobody else gives me a thrill with all your faults. I love you still. It had to be you. Wonderful you. It had to be you. It had to be you. It had to be you. Now, my friends, in place of our usual dramatic sketch, we shall have a vocal solo by that eminent baritone, James Melchior Durante, singing that lovely old ballad, Will You Love Me in December, as you did in Macy's Basement. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Junior, how come we're not doing a drama tonight? Well, Jimmy, it's kind of impossible, isn't it, with you out there in New York and me here in Hollywood? Frankly, I'm afraid the whole thing would be somewhat cataclysmic. Plasmaclysmic? <laughs> what kind of language is that? What is plasmaclysmic? Well, listen, cl listen closely, Jimmy, and I'll explain the whole thing. A cataclysm is a mishap, and we all know that mishap is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Happen. What is a hap? A hap is what goes with a skip and a jump, like in a hap, skip, and a jump. And what is a jump? A jump is a leap, and a leap is a year. And what is a year? Well, it's, A year uh... is a bunch of days, and a day is 24 hours, and what's ours? Well, what's ours is yours, and what's yours is mine, and what's a mine? Well, a mine uh... is where you get coal, and what's a coal? Why, coal is a fuel. What do you, what do you make when you burn a fuel? You make an ash. Do you think I'm going to stand here talking to myself and make an ash out of myself? <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> Now, Jimmy, did you hear every word I said? I heard you, but there's just one thing you forgot to tell me. What's that? What is plasmaclysmin? <laughs> well, that just goes to prove my point. Why, of all the experiences I ever had, this is the most exasperating, <laughs> except one. Junior! Junior, let me tell you. You know, I was walking down Park Avenue the other day. I was whistling... Janina Mia, a fellow who was coming in the opposite direction, he bumped right into Mia. Say, now I didn't say nothing. I started to keep on going. Don't you think he turned around and said, well, don't you look where you're going? Now I stood aghast, because it wasn't my fault. Then he pushed me off the sidewalk onto the asphalt. So I ups to him. And he ups to me. Say, then I ups to him and I says, I said it was his fault. He said it was my fault. I said it was his fault. He said, if you don't like it, I'll punch you right in the proboscis. I was so mad I was fought at the kneecaps. So I ups to him. And he ups to me. But I don't do nothing. I just keeps my attitude, see? Then I says, wait a minute, Mac. You might look like a lumberjack, but you can't bulldoze me. And with that, to show him who was boss, I put the chip on my shoulder and I said, knock it off. Knock it off. Five minutes later, the chip was still there, but the shoulder was gone. <laughs> so I ups to him, and he ups to me. So I goes my way, and he goes my way. Well, exhausted and fatigued, and tired too. I stopped at a nearby pharmacy for my daily vitamins. I was munching vitamin A, B, C, and D, and was getting down to E, F, G, and H. When I feel the tap on my shoulder and a voice saying, have one on me, partner. Now, thinking it was the same chump, I whirled around as quick as a flash I up to. When I find myself face to face with a westerner, a tough homebrew. So I stopped up to him and I says, pardon me, stranger, a stone and a machine. You needn't start a cousin. I haven't done anything to you. Now, recognizing the drawl in my voice, he asked me where I hails from. And when I said, Barzi Ranch, Phoenix, Tombstone, Arizona, he hits me with his leather boot, blackens my eye, knocks me down, picks me up, knocks me down, picks me up, but I kept smiling through it all. I had a smile. He had his fist in my mouth. 
So I left him to his own resources. Now the scene changes. Three years has elapsed. I've grown a perfect toupee and I've prospered. I'm laying on the beach at my Kiki, just a millionaire on the loose. When I feel someone tick me on the nose and a voice singing a lock carouse. It was, I remember you. I remember you. Why, you're the feller with the big smeller. I remember. After three years, who comes back to torment me? Knock the shoulder off McNulty. So I ups to him, and he ups to me. So I goes my way, and he goes the way of all flesh. But not for me, a lucky star above, but not for me, with love to lead the way, I found no clouds of gray, when any Russian flags would guarantee. And get that way I hold that And also Lack a day Although I can Dismiss The memory of His kiss Of Armed Forces Radio Service.